Hey, and welcome to another episode of Wrench. On today's episode, I'm gonna wait a lot for stuff that's not here yet. But I'm also going to reveal a really cool garage hack. I'm gonna show you how I'm planning for this entire project. And if you stick around till the end, I'll show you the concept drawings of what this thing's gonna look like when it's done. Let's go. So as I mentioned, I'm waiting for a whole bunch of stuff. Right now I have a giant hole right here, a giant hole right here, and a giant hole right here. Rear quarter panels, I'm told, are back ordered. Front fenders, I'm told, are on their way to me. The engine, now I could get the engine right now, but what I'm waiting for is the adapter plate between my transmission and the engine. So there's not a whole lot I can do with that either. Now to catch you up on the project, this is a 1969 911S that 24 years ago was converted into a race car. It's been sitting in a showroom for 25 years. I've had an idea for this blasphemy build, twin turbo awesomeness for a couple of years now, but I was waiting for the right car. This is the right car. In the last couple of episodes, you've seen me take off all of the RSR bodywork, remove some of the bracketry, and basically get the thing ready for transplant. Uh, since we've last spoken, I've finalized removing the bracketry by removing some from the rocker panels. I've also explored what the front air intake ducts are doing, remove those to make room for stock fenders. All right, I'm gonna dismantle as much of this front air intake as I can. I wanna see if I can get these pods off. So it looks like there's just an Allen bolted cover on top of these, and then I have no idea how these pods are attached. I see one bolt, but uh, there's probably more. So I'm gonna time lapse it and dig into it. Pretty incredible air intake engineering here. Totally tight seal. The only place for the air to go is right through the oil cooler. My intention is to keep as much of that tech as I can because I'm gonna be running that air to radiators that will be feeding the water-cooled engine that will be also twin-turboed in the back of the car. Believe me, nobody wants to get this thing started more than I do, but while I'm waiting for parts and tools and things to come in, I'm gonna show you guys some offline and online things I'm doing to prepare for the build. The first thing I wanna show you is this cool garage slash workshop hack. So here's my little tool hack. For me, one of the most frustrating things about working in the garage is, is losing a tool. And it's also kind of a pain in the ass to clean up. So what I've done here is just taken the tools I know I'm gonna be using a lot in this particular build and just grabbed a few magnets from Harbor Freight. Um, they're all labeled, so I know that if I move this one, that's the 17 mil. Um, you know, this is from my bike shop days. If I move my tape measure, I know that's the tape measure. That's the triangle. So the idea is that I can make this thing really, really quick to clean up. Um, obviously I have, uh, you know, toolboxes and things like that, but I want really easy cleanup and access to the tools that I use. And uh, I've wired power into this little corner along with the extension cord. This is a uh, liquid idea. So this is a moving target. I will be adding things. Uh, I've taken a belt an old belt here uh, and strapped it down so I can use drill bits, calipers, wooden, um, wooden tape measure. I've got razor. I've got two Sharpies. I even wrote two Sharpies right there. I want to be able to access my Sharpies quickly. Um, all of my sockets, just the quick ones I know I'm going to use, you know? So that's the idea here is 
how quickly can I access this stuff and be able to put it back. Right now I've got screwdrivers and pliers on this door along with some clamping tools. I will be grabbing more Harbor Freight magnets. They're about five bucks. And I'll do this door. I'll probably add a couple more to this door as well, just because it's a lot easier to access this stuff. And then, you know, if I need a, another tool, I can always walk back in the garage and grab it. But um, for the stuff I use a lot, like my power tools, the batteries, drill bits, wrenches, sockets, measuring, because I know how much fabrication I'm going to be doing on this. This is a, a really, really easy way for me to, to access the stuff. So now you've seen a few of the things I'm doing to prepare for this project out in the garage. I've got the door set up. I've got the tools there. I've got the car ready to go. Now I'm going to take you inside the house, take you to my computer and show you a little bit about how I'm planning this whole project, something that maybe you can use to plan yours and show you what is going to keep me inspired the entire time I'm working on it. So this is Google Sheets. It comes free with any Gmail or Google account. This is basically their spreadsheet app. And how I'm using this is just uh, a few columns or rather a few sheets based on some things I know I'm gonna need throughout the course of this build. Um, first and foremost, and this is basically for me to keep track of how much money I'm spending and you know what I'm making back on the project and, and all that kind of thing. Now I don't have a lot to sell off of this car, just a few things, but I'm trying to keep track of what, what I'm buying and where it's coming from and, and uh, any resources I need to make this build. So sheet one here is just uh, what I've purchased so far. This is just parts purchased. I've obviously bought the car. I bought the transmission. Um, I've already gotten the wheels. So I already had the wheels rather, but they're not the permanent wheels that I'm gonna be using on this car. Uh, parts needed. Again, this is very incomplete right now, but just a really quick and dirty like here's what I need to make this car a car again. Parts I'm selling, you know, what I typically do is I'll, I'll put the part up and how much I'm asking for it. And then if it sells, uh, I'll mark it off on this list. Uh, projects that I need to do, which is like install the quarter panels, strip the bodywork, install the transmission, mate the transmission to the uh, engine, you know, install axles. So I just sat down and kind of thought, what can I do? This list will grow exponentially as I work through this project, but these are these are kind of the beats of what I need to do. Uh, any sponsors I brought on right now, I've got Restoration Design, I've got Haltech and Eastwood uh, that are on board in some way or another. Uh, so that's exciting. Uh, Brainstorm, obviously I haven't had a lot of ideas yet. Resources, this is a pretty good, now these are people I know that are in the industry that I can reach out to if I have a question about a certain thing. So um, I just kind of write down what they're known for, you know, uh, if, how I can reach them if I need to. And then this one, which may be the most important part, I think we spend so much time researching these builds. It's like, you know, you watch a million YouTube videos, you watch, uh, you go through a million forums and often you lose track of, you know, where you saw something. Uh, if I just see something, I have a big Evernote, which is like uh, notes on the, the Mac, the OS, and I just grab it and um, I grab it and copy and paste it into this one mega uh, document. So if I need to go back in the future and kind of see what I'm working on or what idea I had back then, I have a place that I can check it out, you know? That's the spreadsheet. That is my kind of notes app. And on to the creme de la creme as they say in the creme business. I posted on my Instagram, does anybody know anyone that um, can do like a technical drawing of a car? Because I have these ideas in my head, but I, I, I'm not, I don't have that talent. Can I concept something? In fact, I bought, this is a true story, I bought an Xbox just so I could get Gran Turismo on, or no, um, with Forza on Xbox, just so I could see if I could win a car so I could customize it the way I wanted to, but I couldn't even customize it enough. So that was a, that was money not well spent. But I wanted to see if I, I wrote down all of these ideas I had for this build. So I reach out on Instagram and I say, does anybody know how to do automotive artwork? And this guy writes me and says, yeah, I can do it. 
I said, cool, do you mind if we jump on the phone for a minute? I'll, I'll, I'll text you a few of the ideas I have for this car. And he goes, yeah, no problem. So I do, and we have a great chat. He goes, all right, well, I'm about to go on vacation. And um, when I come back, I will, I will uh, sketch something out on the old, uh, the old iPad. I said, okay, great. Week goes by. He writes me, and he says, hey, I've, I put a couple of things together on my iPad. And then he sends me this. <laughs> I was like, wait, wait, what? What are you talking about right now? This guy has done the most amazing technical drawings I've ever seen. Uh, and so I won't give away all the stuff, but um, first and foremost, this isn't the color, but it's a cool color. They are the wheels I want to do. Some of these design ideas are things that I want to do with the lights. Um, although he came up with a lot of cool stuff. Keeping it pretty OEM. From the side it looks pretty good except for a pretty interesting thing that's going on back by the deck lid. Uh, maybe integrated door handles. Um, some interesting stuff with the rear view mirrors. Again, as we get closer, I will share with you. But the elephant in the room is this. These big peekaboo twin turbos sticking out of the back. So my goal is to have this thing feeling like a 935 rear. That's the, that's the hope, is that I can get away with kind of a 935 rear end um, with turbos. I have no idea how to do any of that but I'm excited to try. I obviously, this guy has blown me away. This is not what I expected. I'm gonna post his Instagram, which is actually difficult for me to pronounce, but it's M-A-T-Z-C-H-E, and he works for a large OEM supplier in Southern California. That is what I'm allowed to say. But brilliant, brilliant artist. What I'm going to do is get those those uh, pictures blown up, and I'm going to get them on the wall of the garage, and that is going to be what my reference is as I build this thing. So I'm really excited to uh, to to get on that and have it there. Um, so that's it for inside for now. Oh, by the way, make sure you follow him on Instagram. Uh, do that as soon as humanly possible. At M A T Z C H E Mateus is his name. So follow him. Follow him if you know what's good for you and the artwork of the world. Okay, let's go back outside and wrap this sucker up. How incredible are those drawings? Mateus, you are a genius, sir. You are an artiste. So hopefully the next time we see each other, I will have some parts for this car. I think maybe front fenders, but I don't know. Until then, please hit that like button. Throw me a comment below. What color should I paint this thing? And Click subscribe if you haven't already. I mean, I don't want to tell you what to do, but this is a really cool build. So you should probably subscribe to the channel. Hit that thumbs up and maybe post it and be like, dude, this guy's trying to build this car. He doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Let's watch the train wreck. I'll see you next time.